Well, hi there. My name is Scott Duffy from softwarearchitect.ca. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the brand new TOGAF 9.2 standard and tell you the differences between that and TOGAF 9.1. If you're not aware, the Open Group just released the TOGAF 9.2 standard in April of 2018. Now, I've gone through it and I'm highlighting the differences between that and TOGAF 9.1 for you. So you might be wondering, what is that difference? Well, I'm going to pull out four things specifically that I'll talk about today. The four things are number one, that they're starting to treat the TOGAF standard as a modular standard, as a modular structure. So the TOGAF 9.1 standard came up to 650 printed pages. And so the TOGAF 9.2 standard is now 500 pages. They've been able to pull out 150 pages. Some of those pages have just been removed and some of them have put into other documents that are called TOGAF series guides. To give you an example, the uh, TRM, which is the technical reference model or the triple IRM is now in a series guide and is not part of the, uh, the core specification. Now, why, why are they making it modular? Well, first of all, there were a few things in there that, that are examples and they were, they're not part of the core standard. So they were putting in reference models and some examples with other uh, standards and it, it wasn't really contributing to the standard itself. It was just basically extra content. So they started removing some of this extra content. And one of the problems they found with the TOGAF 9.1 standard was that it was so big, 650 pages, it's hard to make substantive changes to that because it is a big monolithic document. Going in there and starting to make changes, there were just pages and pages, hundreds of change requests that were being submitted and they were just not able to go through and deal with all of this. And so they're breaking up the document into the core standard and into series guides and it's going to make it easier in the future. Like if they do come out with the major change, if they come out with TOGAF 10, it'll be easier to, to create that if things are modular. The second difference between TOGAF 9.2 and TOGAF 9.1 is that they're starting to make some changes to the way that the business phases are handled. And so right now in the TOGAF 9.1 standard, you go into the architecture vision phase and you come up with an architecture vision, but you're not really dealing with the business problems. So now in the architecture vision phase, they're having things about the business model, defining business capability, et cetera. There's new artifacts being added to the vision phase. And so it's basically pulling forward some of the discussions of the problems of the business from phase B into phase A, which makes sense. The third thing that I'll talk about is if you look at the definition section for 9.1, there's already lots and lots of pages devoted to terms. Well, 9.2 has added a whole bunch of definitions. And so now having a standard set of terms is one of those foundational concepts of the TOGAF standard because having a common language allows us to talk about enterprise architecture. And when I say the, you know, talking about the enterprise, you'll know that what the definition of the word enterprise is because that's defined in the standard. So now there are more definitions that are being standardized. Part of this is because the ISO, the international standards organizations are coming out with architecture documents and they're standardizing terms in there as well. And so basically it's aligning the TOGAF standard with the ISO 42010 standard for 2011. And the fourth thing that I'm going to point out to you is the content meta model. If you'll recall, the TOGAF standard has defined a, there's a diagram, which I won't show you right now, but the diagram that defines uh, the content meta model, how all the documents, the processes and things relate to each other within the architecture repository. So now because we're adding new artifacts into phase A and new artifacts into phase B, splitting up things that are that are treated as one element within TOGAF 9.1, then there's a basically some additional changes to the content meta model. New entities on the diagram, revisions of existing entities and new relationships between those entities. And for instance, they pulled out location into what's called a global entity. And so when we get into the course for TOGAF, we'll talk about content meta model. So to be honest, looking over these changes, 
um, majority of the document of the 500 remaining pages have not changed. A lot of the chapters have no updates or just some reorganization of the content. I think what the open group is doing is setting itself up to be able to make more substantive changes in the future. So the TOGAF 9.2 standard can be treated like a true, a minor release of TOGAF, cleaning some things up. Um, again, the big changes that I've outlined in this video in terms of content meta model, in terms of phase A and phase B, etc., and definitions, those are basically some things that have been lingering for a while that have needed to change. But as we get into 2019, 2020, 2021, we should expect that there'd be other changes to TOGAF that are more substantial to address some of the changes of the of businesses going into the, this, you know, in the last seven, eight years, a lot of businesses have changed. So expect the standard to change more frequently. To summarize uh, this whole video, TLDR, basically they've cleaned some things up, fixed some bugs, fixed the errors, removed unnecessary content, and they're basically just setting them up, themselves up for some easier uh, things in the future for making changes to the standard. So this is the first few steps for updating the standard. Anyways, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Hit subscribe if you are interested in videos like this, talking about TOGAF or talking about Microsoft Azure and share this. Hit the like button. I really appreciate everything you do and thanks a lot. Leave a comment if you have a question and talk to you again.